Meizu's been able to put out some pretty solid offerings as of late, but they have yet to really hit that large form factor market. Well, they took their recent flagship, the MX4, and just went ahead and blew it up. And we're going to take a look at it right now, because it's Josh Vigar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And it's time to unbox and give my first impressions on the Meizu MX4 Pro. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and get right into it. What we have here is the Meizu MX4 Pro. We did do an unboxing and the review for the MX4 proper is going to be up very soon, but I just received the Pro version, which enhances some of the features. And I thought I would go ahead and do that unboxing for you right off the bat. So here we go. We're just going to go ahead and jump right in. Actually, let me bring that over to the side closer to where you'll be able to see it. And the unboxing, as I suspected, is going to be much like the MX4 proper. We do have the uh, plug adapter that is right here and on the left side we are also going to have the book motif that they had where the phone is inside but it will tell you a lot of the features that are a part of this phone underneath earphones unfortunately again are not included in this version of the phone i suspect we're going to have another sample edition this is obviously going to be a review units and then of course the micro usb charging cable i'm going to go ahead and put those right here for now and get that out of the way. Fly Me 4, and there is the phone itself right there. So, we'll go ahead and pop that out, and some manuals are underneath. And there we are. We have a number of elements already on the screen that you're seeing a close up of right now. Not just that home button on the bottom that has the touch ID, as they call it, but also elements that show the different things you can do swiping up from the bottom. That is, of course, what the Fly Me operating system allows you to do. It's a different take on Android. If we come around to the sides, we do still have this uh, sort of iPhone-esque, iPhone 3GS, let's say, uh, design right here that's highly curved. It has a metal construction here. This is, of course, a larger device overall. And the volume rockers are on the left side, as you can feel right over here. And the power button is up at the top. And with this home button on the bottom, yes, people are going to end up saying that this has even more inspiration from Apple's own product, but nonetheless, it still provides a very nice look. Maisie does a pretty good job with that particular design language, and, well, it makes for a phone that, despite its larger size in its screen, still feels pretty nice, especially with the curves on the back. But here we go, just going to hit this power button right here on the top, and let's jump right into the operating system. Well, there's not much of a setup at all, and here we are with the Meizu MX4's Fly Me OS. It does look a little bit less, let's say, refined, uh, mostly because it doesn't have an app drawer. You're going to be putting all of your applications in folders like this, uh, but ultimately it still looks very clean, and as long as you keep things inside of the folders well enough, you will be able to keep things looking very tidy. Coming down to the notification dropdown, the toggles are right here, and the notifications will come down here. Open up the shade a little bit and you'll see a lot of the other abilities that you have here. But what makes FlyMe very different is the fact that its navigation properties are a little bit different. Of course, we do have the uh, button right here in order to get back to the home screen, obviously, if we hit that. But you are also able to swipe down from the bottom, swipe up rather, from the bottom uh, portion of the screen in order to bring up things like the recent app screen. Or if you happen to be in a number of different places, you also get this little contextual bar that will allow you to go backwards and to do a couple of functions, including having a menu button. But of course, now, as was not the case with the original MX4, you now have a tactile home button right here to be able to get back to the home screens quite easily. And if I get into the settings, which I'll do actually by going to settings right over here, we do also have a fingerprint scanner. You can use it as an unlock uh, method. So you can rest the finger on the home screen and I can go ahead and go through the setup right now. So just keep putting the thumb right here. And to test out the fingerprint scanner, we're going to unlock the phone right here, put the thumb right onto there, and it comes on very quickly. I don't believe that it is able to wake the phone, but of course you can always press the home button, have your finger on there uh, already since you're pressing down on that button, and it will get you right into there. So that's actually a pretty nice way of getting into it. Just press down, hold your fingerprint onto there, and it's really nice. It kind of reminds me of the Oppo N3's iteration, except instead of it being on the bag, it is, of course, the tactile home button up front. 
As we talk about the device itself, I really do enjoy what I'm seeing right here. Meizu from the MX3 that we saw a little while back and then the MX4 most recently that is going to be reviewed by Brian. Uh, it does have a very nice look and feel, this curve that despite its design language seemingly coming from something a little bit more Apple-like in nature, um, does do a very good job to make Meizu's devices look quite nice. Um, and this curve on the back does a really good job of keeping the handling from getting a little bit too out of the way because this is a 5.46 inch screen. But if we take a closer look at this particular display right here, we do have the sizable bezels on the top and bottom, which makes for some easy placement in the hand right here. But what I really enjoy is the fact that the side bezels are so thin. It's really something Meizu's done a very good job with in the past and continues to do so now with this display. It just makes for a really easy on the eyes display experience. Of course, we have the fingerprint scanner down here which is a nice addition that allows for an easy way of getting into the operating system it's a nice idea to have it embedded in there as a touch type that way you can just press down wake it up and then as your finger is already on there it unlocks it uh, i'm pretty excited to put the mx4 pro through its paces i will be reviewing this one in particular as you can see the mx4 review will be available very soon so make sure you guys stay tuned for that and keep it tuned to android authority for all of the best coverage, including coverage from all of my colleagues in Android. Drop us some likes on our videos, subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned for my full review of the MX4 Pro. There's a lot coming down the line as we round off the year 2014 and move into 2015. You can stay tuned for a lot in the coming year. So keep it tuned here, and remember that AndroidAuthority.com is your source for all things Android.